How's it going guys, Phil here, and in this video I'll be comparing head to head this USB mug warming plate versus a USB warming mug that I found on Temu. This video is sponsored by Temu. If you haven't heard of Temu before, it's a direct to manufacturer marketplace where you can order the latest trends from tech, fashion, home goods, and more at huge discounts versus other online marketplaces. Shipping is always free, and on-time delivery is guaranteed. Shop now using my affiliate link in the description below, and new customers receive 30% off their first order, and can use my exclusive discount code SALE2869 for an additional 30% off your entire order. Thanks, Temu! On the left, we have a USB-powered cup warming plate that I purchased on my own because I liked that I would be able to use my own coffee mugs with it. It comes with a 4-foot long micro USB cable that you can plug into any powered USB port. It comes with a simple instruction card explaining the functions. In this other box is an electric heater mug with a clear acrylic sip top lid that Temu sent me for free to try. The mug is made of metal and has gold electrical induction rings on the bottom to power the electronics inside the base. The mug appears to be double wall insulated, though I don't know that the air gap in between the layers is vacuum sealed. The lid has a rubber gasket and creates a tight seal. You'll also receive a powered saucer base with two contact pins and a 5-foot USB-C cable. The saucer's power port is on the side just below the rim near the charging contacts. The warming plate measures 5 by 4.5 inches and is 3 quarters of an inch high. On the bottom are four foam feet, a vented fanless heat exhaust, and a gravity switch which is triggered when a cup 150 grams or 5 and a quarter ounces or heavier is placed on top. The surface area of the tempered glass hot plate is about 3 and 3 quarter inches square. On the front panel are the touch controlled power button, indicator LEDs for high, medium, and low, and a 1 hour drink reminder with LED. When you plug the unit in, it will beep loudly. If you try to power on without a cup on top, the temperature lights will flash and the unit won't power on. However, placing a cup on it will allow the hot plate to activate. Note that the temperature LEDs are not buttons themselves. To change the setting, you'll need to tap the power button again, and a fourth tap after setting to high shuts the unit off. The beeping sound cannot be disabled. If you tap the drink reminder icon, the one hour LED will light up, and after one hour, it'll beep at you to remind you to stay hydrated. This is not a timer to shut the hot plate off. My espresso machine pumps out piping hot espresso at around 142 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how well it holds its temperature while set on low on the hot plate after 30 minutes. So it turns out that the hot plate isn't very efficient at transferring its heat to the cup. The hot plate surface does get very hot, and here my thermometer shows it's around 210 degrees Fahrenheit, but the temperature of the coffee has dropped off to around 112 degrees. You'll also notice that the hot plate automatically switched from low to medium heat after about 5 minutes. I think that the hot plate simply became too hot. I also believe that the base of this cup is just too small to absorb all the heat from the hot plate, so let's try this again in a larger cup with more coffee. I'll once again put it on low for 30 minutes, and my starting temperature is around 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, after 5 minutes, the hot plate automatically changed from low to medium heat, and after another 5 minutes, changed it to high. So there doesn't seem to be much of a point in choosing a specific temperature setting. When I checked the temperature with the thermometer after 30 minutes, it had dropped off to around 130 degrees. A far cry from the advertised 138 degrees Fahrenheit on low and 194 degrees Fahrenheit on high. To give it another shot, I covered the mug and left the hot plate on for another 30 minutes to see if there was any improvement in the performance, but the coffee ended up cooling off another 10 degrees over that time. So my overall feeling is that while it might slow down the rate at which your drink cools, it doesn't actually do a great job at keeping it hot, since the liquid never comes in direct contact with the heated surface, and any heat transfer would be hampered by the efficiency exchange between the cup and the liquid. Now let's try out the warming mug. The base is made of a lightweight plastic and has a 4.5 inch diameter, and is about 3 eighths of an inch tall. It has 4 rubber feet on the bottom, though you'll need to remove the protective films on them if you want to use them for stabilization. The contact rings on the bottom of the mug will always make contact with the two power pins on the saucer, no matter which direction the mug is facing, similar in design to the ember heated mug that I reviewed previously. However, this mug doesn't have an internal battery, and you can check that video out in the info bubble above. When placed on the power saucer, the bottom of the mug pulses blue, indicating that it is heating up and the inside bottom will get hot, 
be sure not to touch the surface because it will be hot enough to burn you. Make sure to wash and rinse the mug before first use and take care not to soak the base in water for too long. I also recommend drying it off right away, since I'm not sure what its waterproof rating is, in order to avoid corroding the charging rings. Keep in mind that while the lid is splash resistant that it is not spill proof, the saucer cannot be submerged in water, so you can simply wipe it off with a damp cloth. What I'll do is pour the same cooled off coffee from the hot plate into the heated mug and simply set it on the saucer to heat up. The starting temperature is 114 degrees Fahrenheit, so let's cover it and come back in 15 minutes. Alright, now we see that the temperature of the coffee is 117 degrees, so not only did the mug hold the temperature steady, it actually went up a few degrees. Since I did start with coffee that was on the cool side, and this mug isn't microwave safe, it'll take a long time to get back to a piping hot temperature. That said, after an hour and a half, it seemed like the maximum temperature the drink would reach was around 141 degrees Fahrenheit, or 60.5 degrees Celsius which is a little higher than the advertised max, but overall a very nice and still drinkable temperature. So there you have it. If your hot drinks like coffee or tea have a habit of going cold at your desk, your best bet is to go with a mug that has a built-in heating element in the bottom to keep it warm. The warming plate sounds like a good idea since you can bring your own mug to the party, but it ends up warming your cup more than it does your drink. The other nice thing about the heater mug is that it has a lid with a sliding sip cover to prevent your drink from splashing while you're walking around with it. But the mug doesn't have an internal battery and will only heat your drink while it's seated in the coaster, which has to be plugged in to a powered USB port. However, the outside does stay relatively cool when filled with hot liquids and during operation while heating. I hope you enjoyed this comparison review, I'll put the links to the products in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.